Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you guys so much for joining. Well, I had uh, recently in a BQH hypnosis session had the opportunity to speak to the super consciousness. The super consciousness, of course, is the universal consciousness uh, that Dolores Cannon speaks of in her books when she explains how she could have a conversation with the super consciousness of one client on one side of the planet and then pick up the conversation with another a uh, client on another side of the planet and they didn't know each other yet they could continue on their conversation it seems to be the super consciousness that we all share uh, in our unified state on the higher level it's also thought to be who uh, Edgar Casey would get his information from when he was in a deep trance doing his readings um, so I had the opportunity uh, recently with a client that uh, said it was okay to share the information but chose to remain anonymous uh, which I'm totally thankful because this information, I think, will uh, be something that interests most people here on the channel. They were sort of surprised, had uh, zero recollection of it because they were in a deep, synambulistic trance and had zero recollection of the conversation. So I did want to share it because this was my first uh, opportunity to speak to the superconsciousness, and I think you'll be interested in what I found out. So the first thing I asked was about disclosure. I also got into the topic of Jesus, which, you know, he's my hero. And uh, so I did want to ask questions about that. So first off, the disclosure question. And uh, will we see disclosure in mass uh, just across the planet? And the answer I received from the super consciousness was that there's already been disclosure to those who are ready to see. And that when people are ready they will see. So then I went into the topic of the solar flash because I know a lot of us are waiting for some type of event in the sky, some kind of flash. And this one really resonated with me because it matched up with a vision, a download I'm assuming that I got um, that seemed like just an idea in my head of course, but when I heard this I realized it was a download and uh, it was that if you if you look at it all at once that's how it will look, like a solar flash. But looking at it over time, it looks different. So then I asked, where are we at right now with this uh, current event or this, you know, in, in this moment, where are we at with the solar flash? Has it begun or whatever? And I was told that we are at 3.8% of 100. Now here I'm going to jump to later in the session because later in the session we go back to this topic because later in the session... He says that we are at 4.2. So I'm, I said, you're saying we just went up four points just in the time that we've been in the session. And I was told yes. And then I got to thinking, well, that's progress. You know, if you're sitting waiting for something to load on your computer and you're at 3.8 and then it goes to 4.2, at least you're seeing some progress. You know what I mean? So I'm wondering, like, you know, how long is this process going to take, of course, you know? Um, so how long can the process take? And it's, uh, uh, he says, it just depends. It's a tipping point. So I, you know, prodded a little bit. I said, so it could take a month or it could take two centuries. You know, is there any sort of time frame? We don't see it taking that long, but yes, you are correct. And then I said, so it's probability rather than a set in stone sort of time. And uh, the response was yes. So I asked, is there anything we can do to help the process along? And uh, he responded, raise consciousness. It's all related. It's all connected. If enough people raise their consciousness right now, it could be at as much as 58% tomorrow. Now, this is from a few days ago. So uh, what types of things help with raising consciousness, I asked. Uh, the response was love and compassion. In the end, there's just love or fear, nothing else. So I asked, does meditating help? The response I got was yes, because you can feel bliss, love, connection to your soul group and your higher self and to source. And when you're sitting there meditating upon this feeling of connectedness, it helps to raise consciousness. So then I asked, so when we get together and meet, this helps? Yes. And the response I got, uh, the elaboration upon that answer was, let's use the word ley lines. You are bright when your love shines. 
but when two or more of you gather, the brightness is greater. But when you are apart from each other, the light is brighter. So now I know that sounds confusing because it says you come together and then you go away. It says you come together, it gets brighter, and then you separate and it gets brighter. So that sounds like a contradiction, but what happened is at this moment, I got this visual in my mind. Um, and I said, I see. And this is, uh, was the first time I realized that, you know, as you get into this meditative state with your client and you're asking questions, you're having this conversation and you're connected through the heart and mind coherence that's done at the beginning of the session before the inductions ever performed, you're actually connected with, uh, the super consciousness as well. So at that moment, I got this visual in my mind that was going right along with what was being said. But in my mind, I thought I was just imagining it, which, you know, you're kind of in this meditative state with your client and you're visualizing what they're telling you. But I never realized how connected we really are at that moment until this happened. And it's uh, when I got this visual of these little glowing dots on the planet kind of coming together and getting brighter and then carrying that brightness back to where they're from, their brightness would reach out further. So it's like by coming together, it energized the group, and then they went apart and were brighter than their original state. So after seeing this, I said, oh, I see. And then the super consciousness said, yes, yes, you see, you see. And then I had to chuckle because then I realized that Oh my gosh, we're all connected. I was just shown that through this download. It's like they sent me this little vid video file in my mind, you know, this collective consciousness. And um, so I got this visual in my mind and I was, uh, he uh, affirmed to me that, yes, you did see what I just sent you, you know. So I thought that was really cool. So uh, then he went on to say, that's why the work you do is so important. You meet and you become brighter, and you spread out, spreading the light. So then I went on to ask, what will this new earth look like when we do reach this tipping point? The response was very similar, but more beautiful, more colors. It's indescribable. So then I went on to ask, what type of abilities will we have? Like, will we be able to communicate tele telepathically? The response was yes, telepathy, flying by choice or by thought, manifesting, traveling by thought, by locate by thought. And, you know, I was, I thought of Jesus when he met one of the, his disciples, how he said he saw him underneath the tree. So Jesus was actually doing this very thing. So in my mind, that came to me about Jesus. And that's when we went into the subject of Jesus. And I said, that's how Jesus did it, right? The response I got was, yes, Jesus was an interdimensional traveler. So then I went on to ask, uh, am I right in thinking we are supposed to be like Jesus? The response I got is, you are like Jesus. Many of you are. People don't understand that Jesus, for, the lack, for lack of better words, was a very cool dude. He was more fun than people think. So I followed the question with yes, but I feel like if we were doing the miracles that Jesus did, like healing and feeding people, um, we could raise consciousness so much easier and faster. So what can we do to begin doing these miracles like Jesus did? The response I got was, just keep showing compassion to others. You just have to believe. If there is just a tiny grain of sand of doubt, well, it won't work. Now, that's kind of flipping uh, what we've heard on, on its head, which I've always kind of wondered, like, I felt at times like I had the grain of a mustard seed of faith for something to manifest, but it didn't manifest, and I just couldn't figure out why, you know. But you can see how maybe that text was switched up, because if you can keep just a grain of doubt in someone's mind to keep them from performing a miracle or manifesting, uh, you can see why they would want to change that in a way to just say, hey, it's all right to have a little doubt, just have a little faith. But it's actually uh, the super consciousness says it's the other way around. If you have just a, a little grain of doubt, it won't happen. But if you can get rid of all doubt, it will happen. So 
Of course, I followed up with the obvious question of, so what can we do to have more faith and get rid of disbelief? Superconsciousness says, start small. As you see your synchronicities that you create, which I thought was strange, we create the synchronicities. I've always felt like, uh, well, I guess I felt like it was a higher self in, in connection with us is creating the synchronicities. So if you think about, about it in that sense, I guess we are creating it. But, um, you know, and that's kind of telling with doing miracles. Are we doing them in concert with our higher self that's more connected with source? So uh, anyway, so start small. As you see your synchronicities that you create, be thankful and appreciate. Watch for more. They will get bigger and bigger, which they have, right? I mean, for many of us, we've been seeing synchronicities. You'll see one, and at the same time, you'll see another one, and uh, they do. They, uh, they grow more and more, and it says the more that you see, the bigger they get. Your faith grows, and it's like a snowball effect. Uh, so you're, you're starting small with these little synchronicities. It says synchronicities are small miracles, but still, they are miracles. They seem impossible but they happen all the time and they intensify. You notice the numbers and you feel it. It's already happening and it's growing, it's working. So we are supposed to take these seeming little miracles and build upon them, using them to build our faith to create bigger and bigger manifestations in our life, so it's working. How do we get rid of the cloudiness that prevents us from using telepathy now? The response was, you're using it all the time, just like the synchronicities and miracles. And I responded with, yes, but it seems cloudy. Seems cloudy. You only need to believe and appreciate when you're sure that a message was received or heard by somebody. Be thankful and appreciate with all your heart and it will grow. It is happening. It is happening. It is happening in your sleep state also. And I responded with yes, but it is also foggy. We forget. forget forgetfulness everywhere. He responded with, well, that's what you came here for. I said, yeah, but we remember dreams sometimes. We remember what's happening in our sleep sometimes. Uh, he responds, we advise you to write them down. Write them down and you will remember more and more each and every day. Soon you'll wonder, is this the dream? Is that the dream? Because it will become so developed as you develop and the consciousness raises. So then I asked about our trip to East City together to get together, this big get together in August, which I'm so looking forward to. And I said, when we go to East City in August, will we be able to make contact of some type? Meaning not just meeting each other, but with otherworldly beings and the response was yes because everyone that goes there experiences something people see and they believe the more they believe the more they will see sometimes people get stuck in disbelief but you all will get it eventually I said is there anything with diet and it says depends on your belief of how it will affect you and I said, so you're saying meat eaters, it's their belief that meat is, if it's their belief that meat is bad, that's what makes it harmful, not the meat itself. And he responded with fear or love. It's appreciation and love that makes it positive. It's fear and guilt that makes it negative. So basically do what you, what resonates with you. Um, anything else with diet, drink more water charging the water with your thoughts and intentions now we've seen this plenty of times where we know it's a scientific fact that our thoughts and intentions in water do indeed change the water and uh so that's just a tip that when you're going to drink your water you know infuse it with love put intention into it and uh you know purify it with your thoughts and uh, i think that just goes for anything that we consume thanks for watching this if you are interested in bqh there is a link below to take the course i definitely recommend i think this is a great tool that uh is just really needed right now to help us along this path and uh with that i guess i will talk to you guys later have a good one If you'd like to support the work I do, go to paypal.me slash UOTF. Thanks.
Thank mm-hmm. you.